and welcome to the 30th of November 2012 for another edition of the Health Research Report. Well, we start out with a bad news for couch potatoes. Is your couch killing you? Well, 94% likely that it actually is. Out of an article titled, Potential Toxic Flame Retardants Found in Many U.S. Couches. Actually, it was done a lot more than just couches, but I guess for uh, clarity, they just said couch on here. There's a bunch of flame retardants out there, especially ones they call TRIS, or TRIS, T-R-I-S, chlorinated flame retardants. That happened to be a human carcinogen, developed learning disabilities, caused metabolic disorders, you name it. And, in many cases, the manufacturers of these couches don't even know the chemical is in the couch. Why? Probably because distribution. They go and they buy the foam and the padding for the couches, and they go through different suppliers, and they don't even know it's there. And the cool part about these flame retardants is they do not require any testing for your health. Meaning, the irony is basically all they're focusing on is whether the couch catches fire or not. Whether it kills you, causes your hair to fall out, your teeth to fall out, changes color, your skin to green, absolute no consequence at all. However though, in 1977, they did outlaw certain flame retardants for your kids' pajamas. Just the new ones don't require much testing. And this is printed in the Environmental Science and Technology online just came out this November. They said studies show they can disrupt endocrine activity and affect thyroid regulation and brain development. Early exposure to them has been linked to low birth weight, lowered IQ, kind of makes you think when they put it in like kids clothing and pajamas and actually affects mental development, motor and behavioral development in children. Now remember what back before, why California may have the highest autism rates? When you come to think about it, we like to douse everything in flame retardant. Supposedly, according to these guys, uh, Governor Jerry Brown had made a um, promise to either improve the safety of these or remove them totally because the risk is far outweighing the benefit. But obviously, once a person's elected, Alzheimer's kicks in. All right, and then they said, overall, we detected, not we, being them, flame retardant chemicals in 85% of the couches. Sounds okay, because you're on the couches from different times. You know, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s. However, since 2005, the couch is made up to 2005, they added a little extra flame retardant. So 94% of those couches basically showed high levels of toxic flame retardants. All right, and they said more than half of all samples, half, regardless of the age of the couch, contain flame retardants that are potentially toxic or have undergone little or no testing for human health risks. Just think about the thing that you lay down on when you get home from a hard day at work or a basic hard day or hard days or someone sitting around watching couch or your kids and your animals sleeping on. I think a little bit more caution needs to be played into this. They said there are so many new flame new proprietary chemical flame retardants obviously because requiring no testing big deal that have been introduced in recent years that has become difficult for scientists to identify them or to determine the presence of consumer the safety in products obviously different types of scientists industrial your couch is not going to catch fire but you may I don't know lower your SAT scores by three or four hundred points all right after that something that does lower your SAT scores possibly Facebook to think about this, all those people that like to have all those likes and friends, well, here's the caveat. More Facebook friends means more stress. And this is kind of interesting. This is something I didn't even recognize. I never knew. It says in here right off the bat that more than half of employers claim not to have hired someone based on the Facebook page. That just blew me away. And this was done, a report from the University of Edinburgh Business School. More than half of the employers decided not to hire someone based upon their Facebook page. Alright, stressor number one. They said a large number of friends on Facebook may appear impressive, but according to a new report, the more social circles a person is linked to online, the more likely social media will be a source of stress. 
And they to repeat, a report from the University of Edinburgh Business School has found that more groups of people someone's Facebook friends, the greater potential to cause offense. Basically, it's a numbers game. In particular, adding employers or parents resulted in the greatest increase in anxiety. Adding your employer or basically your parents as your friend. Smart move. All right, some 55% of parents follow their children on Facebook. Likewise, more than half employers claim not to have hired someone based upon their Facebook page. Only 56% of users were friends with their boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse online, compared with 64% of exes. They also say, quote, and this was from Men Barter, the author of the uh, report, an early career fellow in marketing business school, says, Facebook used to be like a great party for all your friends where you could dance, drink, and flirt. I guess virtual dancing. But now, with your mom, mom they use, dad, and boss there, the party becomes an anxious event full of potential social landmines. So, the greater the number of friends you have, is a caveat. All right. Now here it goes. Four common... Next story. Four common antipsychotic medications prove to not only be ineffective, but more likely kill you because they happen to be being used for off-labels because we like using things for off-label. These four antipsychotic medications before even going on with the story are Abilify. I'm going to read it so I don't get sued. This is published in November 27th Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, and I'm not ad-libbing. I'm just reading what it says. Abilify, Zyprexa, Seroquel, Risperidol. What they looked at is they <laughs> took these medications and the, what it was called a brief psychiatric rating scale. And they made assessments at six weeks and 12 week period of times over a six month period. And I want to say, quote, resulting results using blind raters showed no significant improvement in the BPRS scale over a six-month period. I guess that means it didn't work. Oh, yeah, in the title, I forgot, lack safety and efficacy in older adults. What's older? Older starts at 40. So not the older that we usually think of, but 40 is older. All right, and to go on, they said within one year of treatment, one-third of the patients developed metabolic syndrome. All right. Which metabolic disorders, which of course obviously make you gain weight, diabetes, you name it, and make your heart stop type stuff. All right. Within two years, uh, nearly a quarter of the patient developed serious adverse effects. Serious being, it's going to kill you, maybe, most likely. At least a quarter of them. All right. And just over half developed non-serious adverse effects. Meaning, well, that psoriasis you have for whatever it is, those blisters on your skin, your hair falling out, your lack of vision uh, over time, the fact that you're not able to taste food, well, all right, that's not so serious, but 50% of you will get it. All for absolute zero benefit according to the brief psychiatric rating scale. So again, Abilify, Zyprexa, Seroquel, Risperitol. Not exactly maybe the best choice as far as an antipsychotic medication. And they said, while there are a few significant differences among the four drugs, oh, it's kind of cool because there's this. Notably, the high incidence of serious effects from Seroquel had to be discontinued midway through the trial. So, obviously, that really didn't turn out well for one of those four. While there were a few significant differences among three or four of the drugs, the overall risk benefit for the AAP in patients over the age of 40, they said older adults, that's 40, uh, was not favorable, irrespective of diagnosis and drug. So, all the pain with none of the game. That's your choice, not mine. Some people like pain. All right. Bothered by his next study. This was done by the Psychological jur Online Journal of Psychological Science. It will be published on the Online Journal of Psychological Science. It's not Obviously, they didn't do it. It was done by Ohio State University. And the study, which was quite interesting, said, bothered by negative, unwanted thoughts, just throw them away. Really kind of interesting. Explains why a lot of us like to toss bills when you come to think about it. Says, this is what they said. However you tag your thoughts, 
as trash or as, no th or as worthy of protection seems to make a difference in how you use those thoughts. Because at some level, they said, it can sound silly, but we found that it really works, we being them. By physically throwing away or protecting your thoughts, you influence how you end up using those thoughts. It says merely imagining and engaging these actions has no effect. Meaning I'll think of a bad thought, it's in my hand, I toss it. Makes no difference in how I feel about it, so to say. I'm still going to hate him or like him. All right. They, this, they took three different studies. This was kind of interesting. It says they looked at a couple of different things. And the first one, because it's out of line, there it is. In the first experiment, they took 83 Spanish high school students and basically they told them to write a little note about their body image. And what they did is they had little trash cans throughout around the room. And they t were told to write this negative thought about their uh, body image or a positive thought about their body image. And then they were told to either hold it or basically discard it. Well, they found out that those that discarded the note that they wrote on, that tossed it out, whether it be negative or positive, in their words, had no effect. It says when they threw their thoughts away, they didn't consider them anymore whether they were positive or negative, Petty the researcher said. But if they held on to them, those notes, it had much greater meaning to them. And they wanted to validate this, so they looked at a couple of different things, and then, and then they took what's called the Mediterranean diet. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to basically have these students, this is another 284 students, and they wanted to have them rate this diet depending on how it was written on the note. All right, so what they did is they took another note, they had them write it down. They had one person to put it on the desk, one person put it in their pocket, or one person toss it out. Negative or positive? Well, if they put it on the desk, the negative or positive thought had impact on how they analyzed the diet. If they put it in their pocket, whether it was negative or positive, it had a much greater impact on how they analyzed the diet. And when they tossed it out, it was inconsequential, had zero impact on how they analyzed the diet, positive or negative, no matter what they wrote down before they trashed it. So that was one of the, of the validating aspects. And then they wanted to see if it was imaginary. So what they did is they had the students write it on a word processing document on the computer, negative or positive. What they did is they then took that document and they put it in the recycle bin at the top of the computer. They found out if you tried to imagine the negative or positive thought being discarded. They didn't really explain why. It had no impact. As far as you still felt negative or positive to that aspect, it didn't have the same impact as whether you wrote it down on paper and then you threw it out. And they say basically they said in, another, in one other condition, some participants told simply imagining and dragging their negative thoughts to their cycle bin and saving them, but had no effect later on their judgments. But if they wrote it down on paper, and it was negative about themselves. If they wrote it down on a piece of paper, and then they tossed it, it actually had an impact on how they actually felt about themselves, positive or negative. It says the more convinced the person is that the thoughts are really gone, the better. Just imagining it, like think happy thoughts or whatever, doesn't seem to have that impact. So, something to think about next time you go to throw your bills away, or if you're having a hard time possibly getting over a serious event uh, to some aspect, give it a shot. It may actually work. According to the, the psychologist, it does. Write down the negative thought, what's feeling you, what's bugging you. Basically fold it up, tear it up, and toss it in the trash. And according to them, that'll definitely reduce the impact that negative thought has on you any longer. All right, this is Ralph Churchiano. It is the 30th of November, 2012, and I appreciate every time you guys listening. Catch us in a bit.